sort of semi-autobiographical, really. It's, uh, I, was, <laughs> I was an altar boy, a Catholic altar boy, and I wanted to be a pop star. Uh, I had a sort of terrible crisis of uh, uh, career crisis about the age of 17, where I didn't know whether to become an actor or a, or a, or a pop star. I decided that acting was probably a slightly longer career, so I, I, I went for that. Um, but um, about the time I started writing it, kept coming up with the, the original songs, the, the Pope was doing his big na uh, international tour. Um, and I saw that, and I was in Australia, and uh, I remember he played the Perth sports ground, and he had like rah-rah girls with pom-poms and everything. It was just bizarre, and Live Aid was going on as well at the same time. So uh, it was sort of a culmination of all those things, really. Uh, the story sort of wrote itself to a large extent. Um, I, uh, it sort of grew. Um, because a, a musical so many elements, you know, you've got music, light staging, moments, characters, story. Um, I tended to write them all sort of in tandem rather than sitting down and writing a story then putting songs in and you know working right. out how I was going to do it later. I wrote the script so it could be staged so uh, it was a sort of everyone laughed when I said I was going to write a musical of course quite rightly I think <laughs> but uh, well because I'd never written a song before but um, I, really so trial and error I, I got there yeah yeah so I mean, but are you quite musical or? Uh, I played piano when I was a kid rather badly I play by ear um, if it hadn't been for modern technology uh, this certainly wouldn't have been written because what I did was I got hold of a sequencer and a drum machine and pieced it together painfully slowly, um, learning as I went along really and getting it till it sounded right, you know. So I made rough demos and I went to a band and said, okay, well, I know the bass is doing that, but what it really wants to do is that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it was just done like that really. Um, I think it's a question of a, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. As opposed to some other musicals where, you know, the couple will play the love scene then one of them will sing a song about how much they're in love with the other one. This, this is fueled by its music and the, the, the story moves through the music. So you, you start a song at one point in the plot and you come out of the song and you're in a new, you've moved right. along narrative-wise. Um, it's very sort of dramatic, it's very, um, there's a lot of big moments in it, um, but, you know, it's not sort of hydraulics and big you know, uh, expensive effects, it's all done rather more ingeniously. Um, it's funny, it's satirical, um, and, you know, everyone likes the songs. Well, the story is about a, um, an altar boy who becomes the world's first rock and roll pope. He gets discovered and managed by his wicked parish priest, Father McLean who sees the money-making potential in him and um, takes him over and, and manages him. Uh, on, unfortunately, along the way, Johnny's mother tries to stand in the way between Johnny and this evil priest, and so she has to be knocked off and got out of the way. Um, of course. Along the way, it's like a pilgrim's progress. He meets all these people who are basically trying to make up on him. Uh, this Charlie Fortune, who's the head of the Ecstasy Entertainment Conglomerate, which is the sort of R Rupert Murdoch who raps. <laughs> uh, and then you've got... What a horrible... <laughs> and then you've got the existing Pope, who, who, who doesn't want to step down at all, who's Pope Liberty III, who's, uh, who's got a backup band called the Cardinals, and <laughs> he's here to stay. He's a kind of... He's not, he's not a young Elvis, he's just like an Elvis just before he carked it sort of right. job, you know, almost the nappies, you know, yeah. but he's the Pope. Um, and he's kept alive by a sacred heart pacemaker, which, uh, <laughs> which keeps him going. Um, but unfortunately, Johnny's number one fan, Desire, disguises herself as a nun and gets into the Vatican. Uh, and uh, tries to seduce the Pope into stepping down and unfortunately suffers an enormous seizure and dies. Leaving so the it's way. a simple story then, it's a... Yeah, <laughs> I think it's very simple. It's a rise and fall, basically. Yeah.